Previously in this course, we've seen things like force and acceleration and velocity and position, but those things are all with respect to linear motion. So today I'm going to introduce rotational motion and the analogs to mass, velocity, acceleration, um, rotational energy, force, momentum. I'm going to show the analog to all those uh, ideas in rotational motion. So to start off with, we'll relate the kinematic equations from their uh, linear uh, version to their angular version. So linear kinematic equations are as follows. So you have the one with V final equals the initial plus a t, then V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2a delta x, and then delta x equals V initial t plus one half a t squared. So those are all of your linear kinematic equations. And we have a simul similar set of equations for angular motion. And so before I get to that, let's introduce the analogs to velocity, position, and acceleration in rotational motion. So for linear motion, we have position, which is a vector that we use x or y or s. Then in rotational motion, your angular position or angle we denote with a theta, and that's also a vector, velocity, and we have angular velocity, which we denote with an omega, and then we have acceleration, and so we also have an angular acceleration, which we denote as an alpha. And so the units for this are radians, and then radians per second, and then radians per second squared. Okay, so now we know what variables we're working with. How do we relate the linear variables to the angular variables? So to do that, uh, we're gonna use some trigonometry, or I guess geometry in this case. So if we wanted to know the arc length
of some path, we'll call it S, that corresponded to this angle theta, you would need to know the radius of this, so the distance from whatever the center point is to your where your arc starts. And from geometry, we know that this relationship is that your path length equals theta times the radius r. And we can check this. So what if we wanted the arc length of the whole circle? Well, circle. So the circle has some radius r. And we know that if you go all the way around, you've done 2 pi radians. So the arc length S would be the angle theta times R. Going all the way around, the angle is 2 pi radians times R. And that is the circumference of a circle. So that fits with what we already know for the definition of the circumference of a circle. So this is how we will relate so this is S or X equals theta R. So that's how we relate uh, position to angular position. So how do we do velocity? Uh, so there's a couple ways to think about it. So one way, so if we do start with this for position. If we just take the time derivative, now if we're looking at something that's moving in a, on a fixed circular path, meaning that R doesn't change or is constant. Then taking this time derivative, you get d theta dt times R. And d theta dt is just omega R. And then following that same logic, you can relate acceleration to angular acceleration like this. So that's how we relate the linear position, velocity, and acceleration to angular position, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. Okay, and then of course, if you knew the angular position and you wanted to find, or if you, you knew the linear position and you wanted to find the angular position, you would just do this operation. So let's return to our kinematics equation. So linear kinematics, 
Oops. Again, we had these three equations. And we want the angular kinematics. So to prove uh, what they are, we can do it a couple different ways. We can do it using calculus and start from the definitions for uh, angular acceleration with respect to angular velocity and angular velocity with respect to angular position. Or we could take our linear kinematic equations and replace the replace the velocity with the angular velocity times r, the acceleration with the angular acceleration times r, and the position with the angular position times r. And so I'll do this for, let's say this equation. So delta x would become delta theta times r equals the initial, so omega initial r times t plus one half alpha r t squared. And so now you see that there's an r in each term that's gonna cancel out. And so you're just left with the kinematic equation where you've just replaced every linear kinematic term with the angular term. So that's what, instead of showing that for all of them, we'll just write it down. So the angular kinematic equations look like this. So we've got omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two alpha delta theta and delta theta equals omega initial t plus one half alpha t squared. So those are your angular kinematic equations. And in another video, I'll show you how to, how to use these to solve some example problems. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.